Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast as always. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So, this is something you don't see every day. This 737-800 landed in San Diego after a 40 minute flight from Victorville uh, and it is completely missing its dorsal fin. Now, what is a dorsal fin? How bad is this and what could have possibly caused it? Stay tuned. Wind 31016, we're going right, we're going right. Third line, 31 right. Delta 260, it's produced. So yesterday, a 737-800 from Swift Air, which is an American company, took off from Victorville and it flew a 40 minute flight over to San Diego. It had previously done other flights, so it was not an aircraft that came out of storage. Uh, the aircraft had about 21 years of age. And when it approached into San Diego, a flight spotter called Dog Kempf um, was out taking some random pictures of arriving aircraft and he took up his camera and he took a few snapshots of this uh, landing 737. And when he looked at the photos, he realized that this aircraft is missing part of its tail section. Now, Dog went out onto Twitter, uh, he made a Twitter post, he put it out, and then someone else tagged me in it, which is how I got to find out about it. Now, right now I'm being inundated with questions about how dangerous this is uh, and what that missing piece actually is. So, let's have a look at that. Um, the part that's missing, it's called a dorsal fin, right? It is basically a prolongation of the tail fin of the 737NG versions. It's there, I think it's there on the classics as well, but it's not there on the Jurassics. And there's a good reason for that. A, a dorsal fin is an aerodynamical component, all right? Its main purpose is to extend the, uh, the surface area of the fin and to make the rudder more effective. One of the, the things that the rudder does is it makes the aircraft controllable on the ground in case you have an engine failure. Because if you have an engine failure with an aircraft like the 737 who has two undermounted engines, one engine will be pulling and the other one will only be causing drag, which means that the aircraft will be kind of pushed over towards the side of the runway. This means that in an aircraft you need to have a rudder in the back who is big enough to be aerodynamically effective as a specific speed called the VMCG, the minimum control speed on the ground. Okay, so that's how the original 737 was constructed. It had smaller engines, it was shorter, so it basically needed a smaller rudder to comply with restrictions. But as the 737 got bigger, longer, and it got more powerful engines, well then, effectively, they needed to make the rudder bigger as well. But the customers that had bought the original 737 wasn't too keen on having a much higher fin, because they had already constructed uh, hangars where they could do the maintenance. And if they suddenly had an aircraft that was much higher, they couldn't fit it. So. The engineers at Boeing sat down and they thought, how can we solve this dilemma? How can we make the surface area bigger and make the rudder more effective so we don't have to make it that much higher? Now, I should say that the NG is about five feet higher than the original ones anyway, but the reason it's not even higher than that is because of the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin is ingenious, right? It, uh, it both increases the surface area, that kind of makes you know it makes sense if you look at it but also it turns the fin into a kind of double delta shape something like you can see on some fighter aircraft and what that does is that the, the dorsal fin will for example stall at a much higher angle of attack than the uh, the rest of the fin will and when it is subjected to a large slip angle which you might get if you have you know, a lot of uh, asymmetrical thrust and you put a lot of rudder in, well then you get a slip angle of the aircraft. Um, that then causes a, a kind of a vortex to create, just like it does on fighter aircraft. And that vortex goes past the rudder and it energizes the air as it passes the rudder, making the rudder more effective. So this is why that dorsal fin is there. Now one thing that the dorsal fin does not do is to have any kind of load bearing on it. It is no, not a structural component. And this is important when it 
comes to looking into how dangerous this actually was. So, from all accounts that we know so far, uh, the aircraft took up off from Victorville without any problems. The crew didn't notice anything during the flight and they only noticed that the dorsal fin was missing once they landed. Something else we can see from the photograph taken of the incident is that the dorsal fin is gone but there are also two panels missing on the side of the, uh, the fin. Most likely whatever caused the dorsal fin to, to disappear um, also kind of ripped those two panels with it. Um, we can also see some damage to the horizontal stabilizer on the left hand side and that's not good. Right? But what I want to get to here is that the aircraft from a structural point of view was perfectly sound. The dorsal fin doesn't do anything unless you need it for, for example, an engine failure. But from how dangerous and how bad this was, um, I would say that the major kind of risk factor happening here was that when the thing broke loose and it impacted the, the horizontal stabilizer. Because if it gets jammed, for example, or if it da badly damages the horizontal stabilizer, that can be very bad. Now, that didn't happen on this occasion, and there was no further damage made to the rest of neither the rudder or any kind of um, flight control rigging inside of the rudder either. So, from actually flying the aircraft, not that bad. Having said that, things shouldn't fall off aircraft. So it's definitely going to be a major investigation into what actually caused this. And from a danger point of view, if it falls down on someone on the ground, it's not good. Now, what could have caused this then? Um, very, very hard to speculate at this point, right? The, the aircraft could, for example, have had a very bad bird strike. And if a bird hits it the absolutely wrong way and it causes enough damage for the, the, um, the dorsal fin to actually take on a bit of aerodynamic load in the wrong way, that could have broken it off, for example. Or it could be metal fatigue or it could be a, an incorrect fitting. It could be anything at this point. And this is why we're going to have to wait to the um, final report to see what caused it. But, um, but I thought it was an interesting bit. No one was hurt in this incident. Um, they haven't found the, the, the dorsal fin, which to me would indicate since the flight from Victorville to uh, San Diego to part partially over sea, it probably fell over the sea or it could have fell off in the bush just beyond takeoff if it was a bird strike, for example. Right, these are the kind of things that I love getting from you guys. So I was happy to be tagged on this. And when there's something interesting that I can, you know, give to the debate, I'm happy to do so. And you're gonna have to continue to tag me on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram when something like this happens. Or you can just go into the Mentor Aviation app. You have the links to the free app down here if you haven't downloaded it already. Um, and just send me just tag at mentor and send me the uh, the link to whatever new satellite is, t is telling you about it. And I the reason I can do these kind of like on the go videos like this is to a large extent because of my Patreon crew. My Patreon crew is the ones that are supporting the channel financially. And because they're doing that, they're enabling me to do these kind of like quick snap videos when something happens um, without having to care about finding sponsors or anything like that. So. If you think that what I'm doing is good enough, consider subscribing to the channel, uh, but also consider becoming a part of my Patreon crew. It is really, really appreciated. And it helps me and my family a lot as this is kind of my full-time job right now. So that's it guys, wherever you are, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right, guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.